Hello everybody, thanks for coming out. Um, I almost didn't make it, I almost didn't come. I was kind of hoping Ross would tell me that it's cool, we don't have to do this, but uh, that SMS never came through. But um, yeah, thanks a lot. Um, it's really good to be here. Um, what you're about to see is me basically having a low intensity meltdown on stage. Um, if something moves very, very slowly, uh, it's very difficult to feel the bumps when it hit something, um, which is what's going to happen. Um, the really calm, calm meltdown. Um, that's what's happening right now. I'm totally, totally freaking out out here. Um, you can't see it, but it's just, it's not good what's going on inside here. Um, my name is Lebo Khan Taba. I'm a filmmaker. Um, uh, recently, uh, Ross, Ross said a lot of it. Um, uh, I guess, I guess everything that's happened in, since I got back from China has been kind of crazy for me. Um, trying to make work about like, yeah, other subjects, other people, trying to, you know, make work that isn't really about myself and then landing up and having to give talks and you're just like, I, I, I never thought that this was part of the game, like what part of the process is this? And um, it's kind of changed how people see me, I guess, like how people perceive me has changed in the last year. But I have been, my perception of myself hasn't really changed. So um, when I like see people that I don't know or that I might know, it's like, it's, I'm just, it's, it's come up this like wave of anxiety and uh, self-doubt and uh, insecurity. I'm just like, hey, how, how's it going? I don't know that if this person like knows me or if they've read something I've said or, you know, it's, it's the interactions are charged with so many, like, uh, uh, subtexts, uh, just, just like a bunch of emotions. Um, and when I was preparing for this talk, I started doing a bunch of research uh, in, in, in the meltdown before the talk. Um, <laughs> when I was doing the research about Ross, was like, yeah, I want you to do something about robots. And um, I started to look at robots as, like, a theme, and it's like these... Uh, I guess objects that can like, process a whole bunch of information, um, store it, um, and I was like, so what's the difference between humans and robots, right? Like, what's the thing that separates us from robots? Uh, and then it kind of hit me one day again, like mid panic attack, and like robots don't have that. Robots don't have the capacity to have like an emotional kind of engagement, an emotional kind of narrative with anything. So us as human beings, we come in as like these like emotionally charged objects uh, and robots don't have that. So we can store, they can store information, um, they can document information, but that's all that it is, right? It's just a bunch of information that just kind of exists in kind of like isolation, but uh, enter a human into that and then that's when the emotions come into the kind of framework. And um, that's maybe one of the, the, the successes of all the work that I've done is being able to interact with uh, robots, uh, cameras, cameras being like the robot that I have interacted with the most. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry <man. laughs> Fucking robots. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, So, um, a lot of my work, um, I guess, uh, yeah, like I said, it's, it celebrates people uh, uh, and that comes from me being able to engage with people on a very emotional level. Um, but robots can't do that, so I need the camera to help me document and store that, right? Even if you think of the function of like memory as a human being, um, like the way I remember stuff, and the way we all remember stuff uh, 
your your idea of the present or your idea of the past has to fit with your idea of the present, right? So, um, if I remember my childhood, it has to fit in with my current idea of myself, and that's all again the process of like it, 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 putting things within an emotional context. But robots don't do that. So if you think about like putting things on a hard drive or putting things on a memory stick, they just stay as that and they never change. Um, so those are just the kind of uh, differences, I guess, between us and robots. But then when we come together, uh, you know, they store this, the information as something kind of pure, something kind of uh, unaltered, uh, and then we come in with our baggage and our drama as human beings, and together we kind of do amazing things. And that was the process that I kind of went through in, 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 in all the work that I've done. Um, so my friend and I, Spook Matambo, we made a film called Future Sign of Mzanzi. And uh, it's, a, it's a really popular film. It's got a lot of love from you know, all over the world, screenings all over the world. And, um, it started off as a road trip. It was me and him. We got into like a car with a couple of other friends and we drove down to Durban and we just were making like a webisode, just a really short webisode about the, the music scene in Durban, the gloom scene, really exciting, really vibrant, but uh, like hasn't really been documented. And uh, we spent like a week there just like meeting different people, shooting stuff, and then we came back to Johannesburg and then Spock was like, yo man, there's a story about this guy called Mojava. Uh, and I was like, yeah, tell me the story. So the story goes, uh, Mojava were made one track called Township Funk. And it became the biggest dance track in the world at the time, remixed by some of the biggest musicians in the world. It's the first time War Records um, gave a musician a three album deal off the strength of one track, right? So it was like, really big, Mojava toured around the world, became like an international success just from this one song. And uh, so I was like, shit, that's such a cool story, where is he now? It's like, no one knows, he just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. There were rumors that he was dead. Uh, he was like, he'd been arrested, just, but the, basically there was no conclusive kind of uh, documentation uh, of Mojava's story, the story that in itself comes from, you know, the process of a human interacting with a robot. A musician takes his computer, essentially a robot, and uh, all the sounds and all the, all the mechanisms that he needs to express himself are all there, but without his own emotional kind of journey and emotional narrative, the song doesn't exist. Machado takes the robot uh, and out of his interaction with the robot to make this beautiful song. We come in with our robot, the camera, and we go, uh, document his story, but purely just, uh, you know, uh, the camera, like, or the robot comes in as a very, like, objective uh, injection into the process, um, kind of like nothing really to it, and then when Spock and I go back, we look at the footage, and we're just like, oh my god, this is such a crazy story, uh, and through another interaction with another robot or computer, we start editing it, and out of that comes this like crazy emotional journey that then the third party and audience gets to interact with, right? So if you just look at the, the entire spectrum between robot and human and emotions and how this connection allows us to, you know, get to one, reach an audience, but two, uh, take information that has been stored, uh, you know, and uh, make it into something else, something bigger, something more than us. Um, I'm going to play a little clip from the film, just a really short clip. Everybody's going to stay and watch the film after this, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So, this might not make a lot of sense, but when you see it within the context of the film, it'll make a bit of sense. Robot. Like, if you could summarize Mojava's story over the last five years, how would you do it? Over the five years? Yeah. Mm, over the five years, it's been ups and downs. Because since we have released Mugwant, uh, Mjava is not doing well. Been in and out, hospital, trying to fix this Mugwanti thing, you know, because it was like blown up. Other guys, they were pressing it, saying that they got the right from uh, Mujava. And they would kind of like talk to Mujava while he's in the hospital, you know. So it's like, it's been hectic. 
Uh, I might say it's jealousy, man. Yeah, some other people wanted to see me down, so they come in their own way and put me down. And what was the way that they tried to pull you down? Yeah, it's just like a place is ending up on Vesco Beats because I don't know why I should have like been there for what. I'm going to go to the street. 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 i Never let our medications buy or Ah, that down, man. Price like when you talk for yourself. Or, or what you Yeah, I'm very all that If you to a I still never to the I to 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 Van Negelagata, Fukua was our Kisise, he and Lutagadi work and Diara, number that. Since from first of his things are down this year, you see, no money, no, no connections, no whatever. But I do own an Indian chief, you see. So even the guys are saying, <laughs> Really meet that chick, you see, yeah, she's so hot. Actually, what I'm trying to meet now is you guys that just came up. It's like a new good thing is happening for me daily by continuously. Because I thought it's year end, I ain't got no plans. Yeah, begin. And she see, <laughs> and only if done, arrest me back to that place. Um, so, so that's the story of Majaba, right? He makes the biggest song in the world. Um, he goes and tours the world, uh, but then he develops like a big drug problem while he's on the road. Basically, just any drug that he can get his hands on. Uh, I mean, a lot of this is hearsay, but the point is that um, he, at some point, is traveling with like a handler. Just like a guy that has to make sure that he like rocks up and whatever. Anyway, so the point is that he gets back home and his sisters, this is what he tells us, that his sisters uh, call the people from Vesco Beast to take him away because, uh, yeah, because apparently he's like a, gets like a bit aggressive and he's like a little bit like difficult to be around, a little bit to like deal with, right? Just because of this uh, drug induced psychosis. Um, he gets to their scorpies and he's like, look, I shouldn't be here. I'm like a famous musician. And they're like, sure. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> cool. Uh, and I don't know if you saw, but like his, uh, his neck is a little bit like this. That's because they used to inject um, tranquilizers into, like, into his like, neck. Uh, so like a lot of the muscles in his uh, central nervous systems uh, have like ceased to function properly. So it's just a little bit weird. So the first day we went to meet him. Um, so after our leg in Durban where the film started, so we drive to Pretoria. We actually thought we were going to meet Nozinger. So me and Spoke are busy driving and we're busy talking about the film. It's like, okay, cool. So this is what we need to talk about. And this is what this information, like this is its narrative function. It'll do this, it'll do that, it'll do that. Then we meet Spoke. And then we're like, okay, cool. So where's Nozinger? It's like, no, I don't work at Nozinger. And then Mojava rolls up. 
and spoke is like, yeah, man, I think that's, that's Machado. It's like, anyway, so we spend the whole day with him and he doesn't say like a word. I don't know if you noticed, but in his eyes, he kind of like he's lost his like his soul. So the thing that like makes you wake up every day and the thing that makes you like believe that you can go on and the thing that, yeah, yeah the thing that is, it, it, it's like this intricate system of like, emotions and it's just like you know you can weigh the good and the bad and you can think critically and you can be like i want to do that i don't want to do that the thing that is able to connect you to the rest of the world and people and you know makes you one of many individuals that like work within like a you know an ecosystem of emotional beings he doesn't have that anymore because if you go to a mental institute and they inject um tranquilizers into your neck you will lose something and he lost that he doesn't so you look at him in his eyes and there's nothing in there like he's, he's like there's nothing inside of him so we went back to do a second interview with him just to get him to tell us the story like yo manjava what happened what happened what happened but i guess maybe we're trying to engage him on a very like highly emotive level but i don't think that he can navigate such complex emotions because i don't know it's like it's not there anymore um and maybe for me, the biggest success of the film, so the film has been successful, like I said, like, uh, you know, it's screened in every single, almost every single continent. It's had, like, we've had, like, well, like, maybe 50 screenings all over the world. It's played in airplanes. We've been featured on some of the biggest uh, social media networks, platforms, whatever, right? But that's not really a measure for success for me, because that would mean, I guess, it's me or Ant Spock, but that's not what this film is about. This film is about the people in the film. And ever since this film has been made, a lot of the musicians who are featured in the film, their lives have changed quite drastically. Uh, there's another chapter that you'll see in the film with Felix Levand, um, who's, a heroin, who's a heroin addict, but, but let the film tell that story. Um, but Mojava, he has, since the release of the film, since like a lot of people internationally have like, it's like, oh my God, this is the guy, first of all, this is the guy that made the song. We didn't know that. This is what he looks like. This is what happened to him after he disappeared. Uh, that's so hectic. This is what he looks like now. He's, you know, the last time they saw him, he was this like a uh, superstar, pretty boy, you know, like really smooth. Spock tells a story where he met him like, maybe like eight years ago and they were both sharing a stage and Spock went to go greet him. He was like, hey, he's like, ah, get out of here, small boy. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was a really big deal. Uh, and for him to go from all of those kind of, uh, yeah, I guess, celebrity graces to just be like a really like bummed out, like hobo was kind of shocked to a lot of people. A soulless hobo with no prospect. Uh, they're like, you made the biggest song in the whole world. How do you end up here? How does that work? Ah, like, it's just a lot to kind of uh, take in at a very emotional level, of course. Um, but yeah, the biggest success of the film for me personally is how through our own kind of emotional reckoning and our uh, kind of uh, interaction with robots, cameras, sound equipment, uh, computers, editing and telling the story, Mojava has now started like uh, making music again, he started um, his, his, his book for a couple of shows, uh, he's, he's releasing new music for the first time in, in the longest time. And maybe the way I kind of look at it and within the context of this talk is that our robots, our machinery, were able to give someone their soul back. And it's not really like the actual camera that gave him the soul. Because we went to go visit him maybe like uh, a year later. Uh, we're publishing a book called Future Side of Mzanti where we kind of visit all the musicians and kind of document them. And, and he just had this like glow about him, the glow that wasn't there when we first went, the first couple of times we went to go hang out with him and he's seen the film and he's been getting booked and you know, his, his, his kind of um, career has been revived, um, which is for me like the biggest honor that the film has been able to achieve. Um, and um, it just speaks to, you know, the coming together of a, like a robot is a very objective kind of uh, thing. And a human being is a very emotional being charged with a lot of subjectivity and uh, what we can do together, right? So you look at this, the world we live in right now, the, the digital age where all of us on some level are constantly interacting with the machine and we inject our 
own kind of emotional DNA into these machines and out of that you can design something, you can make a song, you can make a film and it just is about doing like things that are bigger than us because we have, we have the resources, we have the technology, we have the means, we have the connections. You can talk to someone halfway across the world, you know, all uh, inventories of time and space cease to exist. In New York, this thing, Creative Mornings, that exists in like a lot of cities, and it's just this like network of people just who have the emotional capacity to come up with ideas that can change people's lives and can you know engage like like social problems and whatever. I mean, I don't think this film really deals with any social problems, but what it has done is been able to give someone something that was taken away from them, and um, yeah, that's that's pretty much me. That's a uh, that's all I can say is that uh, you know, use your resources that you have and see what you can do to impact other people's lives. Thank you very much. <laughs>